coffee's ready. Got a thermos full, that'll ensure a nice hot cup all day. I think I'm gonna cook up a nice breakfast this morning. Get some eggs and English muffin. It's pretty raw out there. The wind's ripping pretty good and we got some sleet and rain and maybe a little bit of mixed snow coming down right now. So it's a good morning to stay in camp for a little while longer. Oh yeah, it's windy. It's uh, it's ripping, so I think I'm gonna enjoy my coffee. I'll fish this one hole I got in the shack for now and wait till the wind dies down a little bit. Wind stinks, man. I mean, everybody knows that. Unless you're out there sailing a boat or flying a kite, wind really takes the fun out of a lot of things. So I don't have any problem sitting here, you know, fishing this one hole and enjoying the peace and solitude, drinking some hot coffee, maybe read my book. Well, it's mid-morning, got my first cup of coffee down, got the dishes done, got everything pretty well cleaned up, got my book about three quarters of the way read, and the wind just kind of subsided a little bit, and slowed down. It just started to sleet and snow, but I'm gonna get geared up and go out there and set some lines, maybe catch a brook trout for lunch, go try my hand some more of that jigging with the camera, and then probably this afternoon, I'm gonna head out with a snowmobile grab the generator so I can get all these batteries charged up. Oh, there goes the wind again. <laughs> Go grab the battery chargers and, and the generator and probably haul a load of stuff out of here too. You know, the stuff I won't need any longer like the drone or, or uh, dirty laundry and some empty stuff too and some trash. So that way, less to take out when I finally do haul out of here. That's the plan for today. We'll see how it goes. Looks like this storm just got a little bit serious. It's blowing straight sideways, snowing pretty hard. I'm gonna go out, cause I think we're gonna get some pretty decent accumulation. I'm gonna go out and just make sure all my stuff is rounded up so it doesn't get buried in the snow. That way I know where to dig it out after the snow is over and make sure everything looks good outside. Oh yeah, it's snowing. <laughs> down the lake anymore across the lake we're all batting down everything looks good there I'm gonna put a couple twists in this thing yeah, that's good. got the pole right there if I need it all right back in The nice part about coming on an extended trip like this is I'm not in any rush to fish. If it's blowing this bad, I could actually be a semi-fair weather fisherman. So I'm gonna let this blow through and see how much accumulation we get. Might get a foot, I don't know. It's uh, it's coming pretty hot and heavy right now and it's blowing straight sideways. So we'll see what happens. It is ripping nasty out there. I'm kind of glad I stayed in this morning. I'm gonna probably stay in camp a little bit while longer. I mean, you could hear the gust. This isn't even strong gust yet. It, it's been wanting to push the tent right over. I'm glad I got those stakes in the ground, in the ice and pulled tight because otherwise this tent would be in the woods somewhere and I'd be pretty cold. But it's blowing sideways. Snow's starting to build up a little bit and it is ripping out there. So it's a good day to be inside. All right, got a whitefish. Had to resort to the drop shot, but there he is. 25 foot of water. They got pretty soft mouths. This one's not gonna keep. They gotta be 16 inches to keep. But that was fun catching. Pretty white fish. Nope, let's get him back. <laughs> got another one. Man, these guys are so so hard to catch. Nice white fish. Let's get a measurement on him. Guys, I've never eaten whitefish. I've always heard they're great. I always wanted to, but I'm out here in the wilderness right now, inside this. I could eat that thing and no one would know, but I would know. So it's important to follow your game laws. There's a reason why they 
they set these things at 16 inches they want them to make a comeback so back down the hole he goes hopefully i get one 16 inches so i could see how they taste all right i figured out what was up in the water column jig and smelt now i just switched up to the tiniest jig i have on the smallest pound test that i had and i put just the tip of a tail of a gulp on there and that sucker bit it late afternoon caught a handful of smelt handful of white fish didn't really leave camp much at all today i went out and kind of secured all the perimeter again the gusts have pretty well slowed down but the wind is still ripping pretty good and it's still snowing got quite a bit of accumulation i was expecting maybe six inches to a foot and i think i got quite quite a bit more than that already and no sign of it letting up anytime soon as far as the snow goes let's take a look at what we got out there right now You figure if that propane tank it was sitting on top of the snow before this morning and just today the thing's almost fully covered so that's got to be what 18 inches tall or so so we're gonna have a decent amount of snow uh, i'm gonna have to be careful getting out of here and uh, I'll, i'm still planning on fishing tomorrow if it stops tonight sometime so i'll be making a run with an empty jet sled out more than likely to get the generator so i can get all these batteries recharged and keep shooting videos and stuff and then after that should be able to get some fishing in tomorrow it's getting near dark out there i'm gonna go out one more time to assess the situation make sure all my corners are tied down fast and dig out the propane tank see how much i got left in there and bring it a little closer to the hut Up to the top of the tank. Feels like I got a decent amount left. Maybe, maybe a quarter of a tank. So I gotta be, I'm gonna have to be careful with that. The tie downs are buried in pretty hard. All right. Well, everything looks good out there. Got a lot of snow. Gone through a decent amount of propane. I got like six more one pounders under there. I'm not gonna lie and say I'm not a little bit worried about how much snow I get, ended up getting. It's probably over two foot now, or at least it's drifted up to two foot. Not 100% sure on the snowmobile, on its limitations as far as getting out in the powder, but uh, first thing tomorrow morning, if it ever stops snowing, I'm gonna have to go make a test run to make sure I can get out of here without all the gear first. See how it reacts in the powder. It's still snowing pretty good. Got at least double what we were expecting up here. So I got enough food to last a couple weeks at least. And I can catch some out of this hole here. But as far as propane goes, that could be an issue. I just, you know, I ran this buddy heater basically on low for the last 24 hours straight, which I wasn't planning on doing. I usually, I don't run it at all when I'm out fishing, but I wasn't planning on being inside fishing all day. Tomorrow, I guess I'll have to reassess the situation. See about an exit plan. If I can get out of here easy enough tomorrow, then I'll try to keep fishing a couple more days. If not, then it might take me a couple days to get out of here i do have a shovel and i got a snowmobile and i got five extra gallons of gas so we'll see what happens well it's 6 30 i'm gonna shut down the heater and go no heat tonight for as long as i can bear it i'm in the sleeping bag but i want to start saving some of that propane with this storm i'm not 100 percent sure i can get out of here anytime soon we'll see tomorrow morning i think it's a pretty good idea just to bundle up for tonight start conserving some of that propane Oh boy. Oh boy. We gotta take her. Oh, something small on there.
real small. I wonder what this is. A little burbot. Oh, nice burbot. Yes, sir. Get out of all that line. Oh, man. I knew better than that. Nice burbot. All right, that was worth getting out of bed for. Nice cusk on the rattle reel. I can honestly say that's the first fish I've ever caught ice fishing in my boxers. Oh, this isn't good. Just woke up and put my foot down into four inches of water. I guess all that snow turned to slosh in here and everything's pretty well floating, so it's gonna be pickup camp day, I think. Definitely gotta move camp. There's there's a couple inches of water in the shack right now. Hopefully I can get off the ice. Well, folks, I'm in trouble, officially. I don't say that often, but I definitely screwed up. I got slushed in. I made one trip to get to the shore over there. Made it no problem without slush. I stayed on top of the snow. Did a big loop around here to go back and pack down the trail and buried her in the slush there. And it looks like, or feels like there's not much for snow ahead of me other than slush. And I gotta come back about 30 feet to get out of the slush, so. It's bad. I got four inches of slush underneath the snow in most spots. Whoa. All right, folks, that's what I woke up to was three or four inches of water inside the tent this morning. It wasn't very pleasant putting my feet down in that water, but it gave me one heck of a wake up call. This trip went south in a hurry. I got myself into a serious situation here. It's, it's pretty serious. It could be real bad. I gave it I gave it all she had once she started hitting the slush, but it didn't matter. There's just enough crust above the slush to kind of hold up the front end, the motor, and then the, the track just spun. You can see this. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of slush on top of the ice water. Probably five inches. And this is where I buried her. Lucky for me, I brought a shovel, which was which was a good move. And I went ahead and I dug out the entire trail, exposing the slush, and then I threw loose snow on top of the slush and just packed it in with my boot from here till you could see where I stopped digging. And basically firmed it up enough so the snowmobile would stay on top of it to where I guessed I was out of the slush and I just punched it. Gave it all that little 370 had. And she made it over to the other trail. So, as you can see, there's always a way of getting out. It's just, that cost me a good hour, hour and a half this morning situation like that it was just i mean i'm my only way out here i'm the only help i'm gonna have so i gotta figure it out myself and when you get in bad situations like this you just gotta keep your head together that's the most important thing you know your part of you wants to start to panic or get scared or worried and it's okay to be scared or worried but it's not all right to panic because then you start making decisions that are going to affect the rest of your time out and, and aren't good my situational awareness was terrible you know letting that slush come in until last night didn't have a have a clue what happened woke up and it was there but i should have definitely moved the camp off the ice before that storm but should have and would have they ain't gonna help much now they'll help for the next time i guarantee you that so yeah so i packed down just about every inch of this by boot first and dug the snowmobile out of that wet hole there it's kind of heavy to lift you know especially with that slush and stuff on there i had to lift it up and bang it down a couple times and then slide it over inch by inch till I got it up on firm ground that I made with my boots and then it was good to go so plan now is I'm actually going to stop and make myself some coffee and eat some breakfast I know it sounds foolish I got a long day ahead of me but you know you mother, mother always said you can't do your best if you don't eat a good breakfast I'm not even a bit hungry because because I'm nervous about getting out of here but I definitely need to eat I know that I need to keep my energy up because I'm going to need it because this probably isn't the only patch of slush I'm going to hit I, I'm safe from where the snowmobile is right now all the way to that shore over there which is the shore I need to get to so that's safe I can't get the snowmobile any closer than that to the ice shack so I'm going to just lug everything over in the sleds I might make 10 trips to get everything off the ice and when I get off the ice I, I'll feel a lot safer I can camp in the woods if I need to so that's the plan for right now is go get some coffee and breakfast and then start taking down camp and bringing it over to the shore. I'm going to unload everything there and then try to make my way out to the truck without getting buried. <laughs> Hopefully I don't. And if I could do that and pack trail a couple times, then I'll, I'll, uh, I'll take all the gear out of here. And that'll be the end of this fishing trip.
that wasn't good. I just hit an ice hole. What are the f is that? Damn it. That sucked. I went over my f***ing boot. Damn it. Ah. Well, Oscar always told me to put some snow on it. Kind of same ideas. It's on my ankle right now, so I'm putting snow there to try to sponge it off. I'm going to get out of this slush right now. Damn it, that was bad. I don't need any more of that crap. What are the friggin' chances of hitting that one spot perfectly with my boot where I drilled a hole the other day? I had no idea it was there. All right, regroup. Got the heater going. Try to dry these pants so I can get them zipped up again. They they got all slushed in and opened up, so I want to zip them down and button them up and dry that boot. Dry that boot that got wet. I'm taking down camp one piece at a time, moving it out to a little bit drier weather while I'm making some coffee and drier ground. Then uh then the first stage will be getting it out to the dry side of the lake. All right, breakfast is ready. Got some porridge, got some coffee, got most everything cleaned up. I got the propane roll one to try to dry this out a little bit so I can get it zipped back up and buttoned up. This leg got slushed in pretty hard, especially when I fell in. My foot is a little bit wet, but not too bad. And I'm not really concerned about it at all. It's not terribly cold outside. It's probably 15 degrees out there. So, and the wind isn't moving much. So I should be okay as long as I keep moving. But I'm going to eat some breakfast, drink a little bit of coffee, and then take down this tent, which is not going to be easy now that I'm pretty well slushed in. But we're going to get wet. So that's, that's kind of the price you pay when you make mistakes like I did. I'd love to sit here and completely dry out in front of this propane. I'm still not out of the woods, literally. I'm going to need that propane if I get stuck over there on the other side, or if I only make it a mile, or even five miles or ten miles and break down and have to reset up camp again and stay in the woods. So don't burn up all your propane. All right, I got most of the stuff out. It's starting to get packed up. Let's take a look at the water in here. I'm going to go ahead and guess that that's the culprit right there. Having that hole in here made it a lot worse. I mean, there was slush on the lake when I showed up in certain spots. You know, after following through in that hole where I hit most of the slush, I gotta believe just the weight of all the snow pushing down on the ice makes it so the holes that didn't freeze over, water comes up through that with the ice settling down. I heard it settle at like 10 last night. I heard it crack a couple times. So that must have been the ice actually settling with all this weight on top of it. But that's not what you're looking for in a camp. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a challenge digging out all these anchors too because they're slushed and frozen in. The clasp is froze up. There we go. That wasn't good. Yeah, everything's getting a little bit harder right now. Wind's starting to pick up and temps are definitely dropping. So can't freak around very long, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to chop away the ice around it, that's all. All right. All right, there's one. All right, that's the last one. Got all those. Now it's time to see if I can get the shack pried out from all that slush. Looks like we got another storm coming in. Wind's ripping pretty good now and it's snowing again. That's not good. It's time to get the hell out of here.
much easier under warmer and less icy and slushy conditions. All right, that's everything. First trip, like I said, to get across that lake. That's all we gotta do is get to that bank first. And then the work starts. That is it. Three loads to get just across the ice, but hey, I'll pack it a little tighter on the way out, try to get for two loads. It's important anywhere you camp, whether it be on dry land, campsite, wilderness, or on the lake, to leave a nice clean campsite. So there it is right there. It's pretty much uh, a little bit of coffee on the ice over there. This is the third load to get across the ice. I'm even getting rid of that stick. I don't want to leave that out here just in case anybody else comes out ice fishing. I don't want them to have to drill through it or something stupid like that with their auger. So third load, and then we're going to see if I can get out of here. We're officially out of campsite. All right, I got everything to the safe spot. Just unhooked the snowmobile. I'd love to take a load out, try it, but man, it's an absolute nightmare if you get stuck with just the snowmobile let alone towing gear, and that might actually make me stuck if I hit some slush that I can't just gun it through. I don't know what that's all about. So, all right, I'm gonna see if I can make it out of here across the lake and up through the woods to the truck and start packing a trail. was the hardest part with the snow drifts. We got about two foot, maybe a little bit more last night of super soft powder. So the sled keeps wanting to kind of bury itself down and get stuck. But the lake, you know, I just kept her pinned almost wide open and a couple times it bogged down. Felt like I was gonna get stuck, but luckily she came out of it. The trails through the woods weren't too bad. They're steep and they got a lot of bumps. So I gotta be careful there. There's one blow down. I had to kind of go over and around. And then the lo old logging road, a couple spots in that I wanted to kind of bury down too. So I'm going to go back through and pack it at least one more time and take the first load out. Maybe a light load the first time. Thought I was good, but it was slush. Thought it was just a snow drift. I'd made it through it once. Man, this is going to suck. <laughs> I got some digging to do. I'm glad I got the shovel. Man, I'm so glad I made that coffee. All right, I packed the trail down about five times, found out where the slush is, where it's not, got stuck two or three times, had to dig out. First load is ready to go. Pretty good size load. Um, the next load's gonna be fairly light. Hopefully I can make it out. There's one spot with slush that I have to go through. Other than that, it should be pretty clear sailing. Then I got a steep ridge to go over. So hopefully I can just get this stuff off the lake to start. Yes sir, made it out with the first load. I really like this hitch system. I'll show you guys how I built that later on. But it looks like everything's still there, which is pretty sweet. Unload it, go back and get another one. Well, that's it folks. The lake is angry right now. There's snow nados turning around out there. It's hard to see probably with the camera, but they're happening. Tornadoes, it's ripping. My tracks are pretty well gone after a couple minutes because the wind's blowing it over so hard. Got everything loaded, a little bit lighter load this time. Got some nasty slush to go through. I've gone through it a bunch of times. I'm hoping I can get through it one more time. I'm gonna punch it. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Wish me luck. Okay, made it out, made it through that big slush hole. It was tough, not gonna lie. I, I bounced around a couple times and bogged down. I thought I was gonna be stuck there that would not have been fun not a good way to end the trip but i made it through made it out got both loads out 
uh, trucks here. I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I put a note on my window. That's always a good idea. Hang it up, you know, I put it there so it wouldn't get covered in snow like the windshield would, saying where I was planning on fishing, where I might go if I don't fish there, and when I'm planning on getting out. Obviously I came out because the weather and, and the slush kind of forced me out a little sooner than I'd like, so that's a little bit disappointing, but I'm pretty excited that I made it out because that could have gone a lot different way if you know what i mean that could have been really dangerous all in all the fishing what little i did was absolutely amazing i get to catch some species that i don't normally catch way up here in northern maine never saw a person still haven't seen a person never got bothered by anybody pretty much had the entire wilderness to myself saw a lynx and a pine martin for critters and a couple eagles and ravens and a couple other birds i gotta look up what they are when i get home absolutely amazing the little 370 twin fan cooled ran absolutely amazing first time out first time on a trip i had it i just picked the thing up not too long ago and had it out twice very new to snowmobiling as you can tell so i'm gonna have to learn some things the hard way as i normally do 